civilization will collapse. In fact, there's a date, and that date is 2040, 2040. And I'm not talking at the top of my head. I'm not um, making this up. In fact, there was a study done in 1972, and the study um, looked at the, the capacity, the carrying capacity of the Earth, and they found that at the rate of usage of, of the Earth's resources and overpopulation, um, the increasing demand on the Earth by 2040, civilization will collapse, which means that which means that the government all governments will not be able to meet people's needs. There'll be hunger, there'll be starvation, there'll be a collapse. And this may seem to, to you to be a shocking thing because we look at our world, our society, our government, and we think these things are stable, uh, permanent. Maybe not, you, you might think these days. And, and we think of it in terms of there may be trouble coming. But what I'm talking about is collapse. I'm talking about a collapse that affects all parts of society. And because we are interconnected globally, it looks like it's going to be catastrophic. This is all done by a study done in 1972. And I remember learning about this um, years ago, and I thought this was strange, but everything I read, everything I, I looked at, every, every political science um, economist said, yes, this is about to happen. Lately, um, um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology looked at the whole thing, and they confirmed it. KPMG, a, a large accounting firm, looked at it also independently, and they confirmed it. You see, the Earth is like a checking account. And if we keep withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing on any checking account, it, it's going to collapse. It, it can't continue. So we are subtracting from the Earth continually, continually through through conspicuous consumption, through, through greed, where we're just abusing the, the whole thing. It will collapse. And when this happens, when civilizations collapse, there's great uncertainty. It leads to war. It leads to civil strife, it, it leads to uh, um, fighting in the streets. Why do you think we, we have all these apocalyptic um, uh, movies and they're so popular? Because we sense it, because we, we know what's going on. Look at any civilization in the world, any. You can look at them all if you want. You can look at Rome, various kingdoms. You can look at Great Britain, for, for an example. Great Britain was probably the largest empire ever in history. The, the saying was that the sun never sets on the British Empire, just, just how large it was. But now Great Britain is reduced to a land territory that can fit into upstate New York. Civilizations collapse. It happens all the time. Rome, Greece, Egypt, the Mayans civilizations. What maintains, what, what continues are the people. There's an example of the, the Byzantine Empire. And for a while, Eastern, Eastern Rome, um, Rome was split in two after a while, the West, um, which, which, is, which is Rome in, in Western Europe, and the East, which was in what is Turkey today. And the Byzantine Kingdom was large, powerful. It lasted longer than, 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 than Western Europe's Rome. Um, but through military expenditure and, and, and through foreign attack, they began to decline, they began to decline, they began to collapse. And what they did to solve this problem is that they, they decentralized and they simplified society. They, they fired all the soldiers, all the, the military, settled them on plots of land and, 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 and gave them enough to, to feed and sustain themselves. And by doing so, what happened is these soldiers had something to fight for. These people had something to live for and they began to regain territory and in fact, the Byzantine Empire lasted um, way beyond, almost up, up, up until, I think it was, um, right, it, it, it changed into the, um, the Ottoman Empire and so forth, but it lasted a very long time. And the Ottoman Empire is its, it's successor. And um, that's not until, until modern, modern ages. So what I'm saying is the only solution that we have to society, to stem societal collapse is a decentralization, it's a, it's a simplification. It's to just give people what they need to sustain themselves to live. We have rich men who don't care paying billions of dollars and, and for, for, for nonsense and while people starve. It's un, it cannot be sustained. We are our brother's keeper. There is a price to pay for, for all this. We, we, we as human beings, I'm not blaming people. It's human nature. 
And human nature is such that we behave like locusts. When locusts get together, they're just simple grasshoppers, mind their own business. But when they congregate in, into societies, they become, they become unquenchable. They, they, they want to propagate and they'll eat everything inside until they collapse. And we are no different. We will eat and consume everything inside until we collapse. And it should not happen. There are people who are going to get hurt. The people who will survive the, 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 these collapse are either going to be the organized or it's going to be the powerful. And also, I think that in, in this country, United States of America, we have treated workers horribly throughout. We tend to think that it's that it's a, it's 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 a it's an anti-black thing that 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 black people deserve what what they're getting. But many people think that even blacks. But they don't understand that that, that same uh, that same treatment of people as being um, no good also hurts them, them too. The only way to get through this thing is to do right. We are our brother's keeper. Civilization will collapse. There's no stopping it because we're not going to stop the, our consumption and our use and our raping of the earth until there is no more. People have money on top of their money, so much money they have to hide it um, to, to keep it. Yet still, it's not enough. People are starving. People are, are moving around. We think it's just in those countries. People are forcing themselves into, in, into other societies because they have to live. And if we think that we can build a wall or shield ourselves from this problem, we can't. 2040 is, is less than two decades away. Many of us will be around. And the scandal of it all is that we are so greedy, we are so self-centered, that we are leaving a mess for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And I believe in God. And I think that there's a, a price to pay. I believe we, we, we have to do what's right. I'm remembering of the, the, the book of Esther, when Esther and her people faced extermination, collapse. And, and, and Mordecai told Esther, perhaps you were born for a time such as this. And perhaps you were born for a time such as this. Perhaps you have to do something. You see, it's like the decentralization of the Byzantinian army. They, 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 once they individually began to act collectively, things happened for them and they saved the civilization. It's the same thing being asked of you. Civilization will collapse. The Bible in Ecclesiastes 3 um, through 8 says that there's a time for these things, a time for, there's a season for everything, for war, for peace, to kill, to break down, to heal. There's a purpose for everything under, under heaven. And we can't forget the great commandment to love the Lord with all our hearts and soul and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are not doing it. And that's why we face collapse because we're not doing it right. We were given, if you will, a garden of Eden, the earth. And all we want is that which has evil in it, greed. And until we stand up and speak and talk and get this thing back on track, we're going to fail. Because it's going to collapse. There'll be much misery. I always say, in the end, Jesus will say, there'll, people will say that with Jesus, we've commit, we did miracles in your name. We've done, cast out demons in your name. And Jesus says, get thee hence, I've never known you because when I was hungry, you didn't feed me naked. You didn't clothe me. And that's for us. There were conservatives in our midst and, and they're, they're capitalists. And these hardened capitalists, they know it's coming. Every government knows the collapse is coming. Every person in power knows the collapse is coming. They just don't teach it. But what conservatives believe, and believe, and that's why they're, they're anti, they become anti-environmentalists, they believe that, that, that this is our time and, and the world is changing to a brown world. And they believe that, that their philosophy is that we're going to use every drop of, of resource now and leave them nothing. And we're letting it happen. It's our fault. We're letting it happen. It is not that there are evil people in the world. It's that good people do nothing. And, and, and it's, it's very simple. Whenever you want to see where your power is, it's where they want to shield you from. They want to shield you from voting. They want to shield you from education. They want to shield you from the marketplace. And these are the places we must get to. And we must not get to them because 
you want to be like uh, um, these these conspicuous consumers it's because we want to do what's right you have to vote there'll be a time you'll have to answer that you could have voted you, you, you could have stopped this but you just decided to stay home because you didn't like it because you didn't feel like it this, the time for things are over you're going to experience it. You're going to regret that you didn't stand up and do something right. Have we learned our lessons? Have we seen the guy with the cotton candy hair act the fool? Because we didn't vote. We, we didn't do our best. And it's incumbent upon us to do our best. If a little shepherd boy with, with some stones could bring down Goliath, what more can we do if we just use the things that are in our hands? What is in our hands today? We're being asked at this great time to stand and do what's right. You can't say you didn't know now, you know. We're facing collapse. It is going to come. Every civilization collapse, you name it, they collapse. But those people who, who really want to do what's right stand. Because sometimes we think that we have to preserve the life that we had, but Jesus says if we are not at a place where we're ready to to. to to give our lives, if we try to preserve our lives, we'll lose them. I'm not trying to lose my life. We, you should not want to lose your life. We have to do more. Civilization will collapse. There will be hardship. There will be hunger. There will be famine. There will be war. And it's not because of those people who we can look at and blame. It's because of us. There's a reason why the, the, you are, the, the, the yoke is on your neck. Because if you ever get free, if you ever stand up, if you ever vote, vote, vote. If you get active and say it's not going to happen, do you love your children? Vote. Do you love God? Vote. Just do it. What we need right now is a second emancipation. And that second emancipation is, is not just for people of color. It's for the entire country. It's for the entire world. We have to give people the 40 acres and their mules, the means in which to support themselves. And we have to do it in a way that you just don't spend it on foolishness. The Lord says that we have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask amiss. And we've been asking amiss just to ride around in a fancy car and people starve. So we got the bad news, but we also know the gospel. We have to act. Or we'll fail. And if we fail, we'll have to answer. Father, we love you. We thank you and adore you. We lift you up. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you, O oh God, for this message. Lord, let this message strike ears, O oh God. Let people be uncomfortable, O oh God. Let us get off our couches, O oh Father God, and act like we understand you, Lord. Help us to be courageous and, and powerful in our means, O oh Lord, and to do our bit. Let not the widow with the mites outdo us, O oh God, but let us stand in arm in arm with her, O oh God, to create a better world. Lord, we thank you, love you, and adore you. And in your holy name we say, amen.